Do you need anything before we get started? Do oh, we're we getting started now? We're about to, yeah. I don't think so, so long as I'm cute. You look cute. Just make sure my stomach doesn't stick out. Should we get something to cover it? Yeah. Like what? How about a little... You want to cover your stomach with that big... Okay, I'm ready. <laughs> it's my baby. I got a little baby. My little pet. Okay, welcome to Take Your Shoes Off, the 50th episode. Hi. I'm in England. I'm in England where my shoes are on because we're not in Rick's apartment. So this is the special 50th episode. My mom has always dreamed of coming to England. Dream. Oh, we are really here. Oh, everybody's got a flipping crown on. Look at this. I'm so excited. I want the nicest room you could possibly give me for the least amount of money. I have AAA, I have ARP, I have everything. Here's my medical card. Oh my God, this place smells so good. To get a picture of me with that guy. Yeah, there you go. This is good for disability. So we have hearing dogs or blind dogs. How cute is that guy? Ready? I'm going to tell you something, Ricky. There's one big disappointment. What's that, Mom? The big disappointment is, is that I came to England with two tiaras so mm. that I could wear them and meet the Queen. I forgot my crown, so I'm a little disappointed. Now, how would you have met the Queen if you had the tiara, Mom? Because I, when I went to Kensington Palace, which she's not there, but Kate and, and William... Great. I want to talk about, not only is this the 50th episode, but it's the 50th episode with Andrew Santino, one of my oldest friends in Los Angeles. So cute. So redheaded, so funny, so darling. I'm in England. I am overwhelmed that this has been my dream my entire life to come here, and it's better than I thought it would be. Everything about this city is so fabulous. Right. We're not interviewing you. Oh, right. I'm sorry. Hey, how come I don't have a mustache? You do. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. You don't. <laughs> Snap your fingers. I don't know. I don't snap. I don't, I'm not a snapper. Look, that's as good as it gets. All right. Then we're just gonna hand it to you. Let's do our let's do our shtick. We have the same routine that we always do. I'll get it started. You ready? Yeah. Hey, mom. What time's dad coming home? <laughs> oh, I, I don't know, Rick. He usually gets home between five and five thirty. Well, I guess we're gonna have to take a big poo. <laughs> we'll tell people about this sweatshirt. Oh, goblins. Uh, you can take your shoes off goblin sweatshirt. You yes, you goblin, <laughs> you can take your shoes off goblin sweatshirts. Thank you so much. We will be selling the take your shoes off sweatshirts at rickglassman.com as well as the pearl necklaces. No, the pearls are mine. Are those real? real? Yeah, of course they're real. There's a lot of things about me that, well, everything about me, unfortunately, is real. What would you say is more real, this pearl necklace or how real Andrew Santino and I are together in this episode, Mom, go. Oh, no, the, the pearls are real, but the real jewel mm. of this Good. Is the podcast Good. is Andrew and Rick. They are phenomenal together. So Mom, cute. have you seen this episode? Not yet. <laughs> well, you guys, Andrew and I did, recorded an episode of the podcast, but it, we ended up getting into some serious stuff that Andrew and I decided we're not going to put out there. So we did this podcast again a week later. That's the episode you're seeing. On my Patreon, I am going to be taking bits of that first episode and throwing it up there within the next couple of weeks. So if you want to, go to the Patreon, patreon.com slash take your shoes off. These make fabulous gifts, teacher gifts for the end of the school year, Valentine gifts, which already passed, Mother's Day, fabulous, Father's Day, the best. So so just to be clear, we could get these for Valentine's Day, which is past, but they're really good for Mother's Day, Father's, Father's Day, Day, and teachers. Can we go to lunch? <laughs> <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, can this be over soon so that we could go to lunch? I want to do a little London lunch. You know, a lot of people are watching this on YouTube, and I want to get on the new and noteworthy on iTunes, okay. Apple Podcasts. Okay. So I've been asking everybody, even if you watch this on YouTube, head over to Apple Podcasts, click five stars, leave a comment, and subscribe. And mention that Mama Glassman's pretty hot. Great pearls, great sweatshirt, great little baby. 
You guys leave a comment below and let me know if next time my mom is on the podcast, if you'd like her to cover her stomach again or if you'd like to see all of my mom. Okay. Scoot do. I do believe you. Do. <laughs> Bobbity blue. Oh, Bobbity blue. Bobbity blue. Oh, wait a minute. Pip, pip. Cheers. Oh, yes. Cheers. Oh, fish and chips. Fish and chips is a good one. <laughs> Let's go get fish and chips for lunch. That would be fun, Ricky. Let's walk someplace and get fish and chips for lunch, okay? Everybody, thank you for watching the podcast. Andrew, you rock, baby. It's great to be in England. Scoop do do doodly boo boo boo. Scoop do blabbery blue. Scoop do. Oh yeah. <laughs> 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 Hello. Hey. No uh, headphones? Huh? Do you want it even to keep your no. ears warm? No, I'll be good. Anyway, sorry. I, uh, the, <clears throat> my heating's broke. It's fine. Thanks for coming over again. We did this... No problem. A week ago. Yeah. One week. Yeah, well, there was some funny stuff in that episode. <laughs> you okay? No, I'm fine. I've just been fighting something, and I have a pretty bad immune system. <coughs> yeah, there was some funny stuff in the other episode. Yeah, there was but, a lot of good stuff in the other uh, episode. But we ultimately decided... We couldn't put it out. Why is that? Hmm... It just, it just, God, it's, this is uncomfortable. I'm mm -hmm. not going to lie. I am like, I'm like stripping in sweat. Like my, I'm, this is, it's way, this is uncomfortable. Is it, you It's hot. I'm like hot. It's like burning up. Yeah. Do you mind? No, that's fine. Thank you. Yeah. Last time you came over, it was very, very cold. Yeah. And I, uh, I thought I might want to intercut between the two episodes. Right. So Andrew, for those of you listening and not watching, Andrew came in with his jacket and his, uh, Gloves. They could so hear it. Match. Do you think they could hear it? The jacket and the gloves? Yeah. No. You can't hear shush. I don't know. They knew it was jacket and gloves. They uh, probably thought it was a, a windy. Well, it would have been a fun game for them to play. Yeah. But you ruined it. Uh, I'll cut to a clip. Do you want this? I would love it, actually, to be honest with you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Could you do it over my shoulders? Could you put it just like. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Just like through the front and then up below my neck there. Yes. Thank you. Like a little pig in a blanket. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, yeah. Rick. Uh, Mike, just a little bit that way. And nope, 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 closer. And then down a little bit. And then angle up. Bingo. Thank you. <sighs> I got to tell you something. I have to be very honest with you. I'm extremely hot. I'm like sweating. Huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, this blanket is not helping at all. I thought I thought it was going to be freezing, but man, is it the opposite. This one has holes in it. Thank you. That's even better. That's... Thank you. Thank you. We could take all this stuff off. <laughs> it's great. You know I mean? Yeah, it's great. Ultimately, we decided not to put it out. The truth of the matter is, Andrew and I, we got into some stuff that we didn't want to share. Big time. And there's so many funny things. Do you have a Patreon? I do. Do you put exclusive content up there? Mm -hmm. I'm about to do one today. It's a lot of work, right? Life is a lot of work. Could you do that again? Um, but I will. Uh, I'll put a little like music under it. Life is a lot of work. Pushing in on Andrew now. You gotta. Uh, you gotta really work at it to make it go. Mm. And you know. Keep going in. Closer. Sometimes. Uh, sometimes the work gets to you. Push in on his mouth so we just see his face. But it's good right now. Good. That's one of those bits I like to call, a little game I like to play called, was it worth it? <laughs> no. And it's going to be a lot of editing. So, um, Perry, if you're editing this, I'm, I'm, I'm sorry. Who's Perry? What, what are you doing? I'm in the middle of editing this. Ah! <laughs> <coughs> I was trying to have you meet. I'm sorry. Uh, where did you go? I went to the Grove. Oh, why are you yelling like you were in hell or something? Because I was. I was I was in the I was in the women's shoe section I, and I started to panic. I didn't know what to do. Whenever I'm around that many women and that many shoes, I just panic. Well, Don't I want, do that again. I'm sorry, I, I I wanted I meant to introduce you to Perry. I just want you to meet Andrew. It's a weird-looking dude. 
I don't, yeah, I don't know. He had like some of that like half Blake Griffin looking kind of, but except without like the athletic qualities or any of the handsomeness that Blake has. He's kind of got like Blake's, you know, unfortunate cousin. You know what I mean? Oh, because of the way he looks or because he's not an athlete? All the above. I don't know. You know he's gonna, he's editing this. He's going to see it. Really? I'm. Well, what I, what I was saying, you know, it's good to be a part of that family regardless. <sighs> don't do that. Don't do that. Don't do that ever again. We'll be right back with a word from Marshall Rudd Gallery. Oops. If you're looking for just the right flooring, you need choices. And at Marshall Carpet One, you'll certainly find them. You guys, and we're back. We're back. And we're back. <laughs> no, no, and no. we're back. No, you don't say and. Andrew, thank you. Uh, first, Andrew, thank you for coming back over again. Welcome. Thank and you. And Glassman Boppers and TYSO Goblins, thank you for bearing uh, through the first few minutes of these these bits. What uh, you, they were great. I think they liked them. I think so. I don't know. What you probably are seeing is maybe a minute and a half. Uh, we've been doing this for a while. It's been a long time, actually. Yeah. We, in total, this whole podcast will have taken us four to five hours to, to complete one podcast. So I do bits on this podcast a lot, a lot of snap stuff. Yeah, I know. Uh, do you want a water? No. Uh, and th- th- they, as silly as they are, they always feel organic. It's like, yeah. I have an idea for a bit. Um, when you came back over, because we did do this podcast last week. We did it, yeah. And there was so much good stuff in it. Yeah. And earlier in this, I snapped and I said, we're going to cut to it. I-, I don't know how much of I'm really actually cutting to. I'll have to see. It's going to be a lot of work. We'll find out. But there were so many... I did more bits with you on that podcast than any of the podcasts I've done, two or three combined. You still put in some of those bits. I'll probably put some in. Maybe here's an opportunity. Eh, I don't want to set it up now. I'll do it. I mean, we're... I'm curious to know who decided the spelling of sounds. The cow goes... Moo. But, and then we spell it M-O-O-O-Y. Phonetically. But but why? Maybe, but because the cow doesn't necessarily go moo. A cow goes. Mm. So, so it could you, be. It so could you're not be, asking about the spelling. You're asking about like who onomatopoeias it? and who picked it and why is that? Why do they get to decide that moo is the onomatopoeia that goes with the sound? Because moo is a. I guess it's easy for children to right. understand. But that's not. I my, actually have the answer to this. Go. Legitimately, Fisher yeah. Price. They made up all those noises. Made, I know that. I'm saying, but I want to know the man that did it or the woman that did Fisher. it. Fisher. Well, how do you know Price didn't do it? Because Price Price was the Wozniak, Price did the made the technology work. And Fisher was Jobs. Your, Fisher was Jobs. But well, from what I've heard, that Price was Price was much more of of a keen intellect about social interactions. Well, that's why Price Waterhouse, as he went on to do, do all of the the voting for like the Academy Awards and stuff, where everything's so private. But 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 you're right. That's Thank why you. he was so socially like attuned. But Coop, when Cooper came along for Price Waterhouse, Cooper's when he came into the mix, the rumor was mm-hmm. he was the initial one that got Fisher into the business. Never paid him out. Never paid him out. Never paid him back for any of the stuff that he gave him. Information, technology. So the biggest beef that existed about this whole thing was... Between Fisher and Cooper. Between Fisher and Cooper was that Price and Waterhouse had their own business separately. You know Water Towers? Mm -hmm. That was them. You're saying actual towers that hold water. Actual towers of water. Water Towers came from... The, the confluence of ideas between you know, that actually adds Price up. Waterhouse and not Fisher and Cooper. Because Fisher ended up leaving the toy game and got into when people have a cut on their butthole. That's right. And he teamed up with Anal. That's right. Yeah, so Anal Fisher now is kind of working on this medical side, which we actually uh, had them as a sponsor. I'd like to cut to a clip. They're sponsoring the show? There's, this is going to be so confusing for people who are listening, not watching. Yeah, but who are you really going for on this episode? This is for visuals. So if you're listening to it right now, get on YouTube and watch it as well. In yeah. fact, here's how you should do it. Yeah. I think you should play the audio and simultaneously play it on YouTube, but turn off your YouTube audio. Right, so you could listen to it on your phone while watching it on your computer. Bingo. It's kind of like w- uh, watching Wizard of Oz while listening to Pink Floyd. Dark Side of the Moon. Done it. Didn't work. Really? In fact, well, the rhythm of anything will line up at some point, regardless of which film it is. That was the that was the, the real... rhythm of anything will line up to regardless of which film it is. Who said yeah, that? Me, just now. Hmm. You want to hear it again? Yes. The rhythm of anything will line up at some point, regardless of which film it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Huh. yeah. But it is true. You put that soundtrack to any film. Uh, film inherently has rhythm to it, right? Almost every film does have a beat to it, so to speak. So does anything good in art like that, right? 
Yeah. It just works in a weird way. You know, like they say that the the the, the song Money, doom, 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 doom. That's all I can do, by the way, for copyright infringement. I don't mm-hmm. want to get you anymore. But that song lines up almost perfectly. They say, um, with the beginning of the scene, when the... Um, Wizard. With the Yellow Brick Road, I think it is. Mm. Either way, I remember doing it in high school, but I was also like, you're high, that can, that you can do, you're going to get sued. You're going to get sued. Well, that's it. You know, it's interesting, you talking about rhythm and entertainment and how things, music goes with cinema and it everything does. crosses. Yeah. Uh, it's actually a perfect segue into a gift that I got you. Are you serious? Yeah. Show me. Uh, heavily inspired by the king of what you're talking about. Oh my God, this is so incredible. Is this genuine? Mm-hmm. Great rapping, by the way. Thank you. Very good job. Some people don't know how to rap. This is a great rapping job. Yeah, I know how to rap with a W and an R. Let's give me a little bit of R. Uh, we'll cut to a clip. Take that beat. Fucking wet, dude. In the mission, and in the mission, let me clip. And let me put it in my ears, let me show a clip. Let me ask if it's sick now. Yeah! And let me put it in my mouth with my baggy ass. Watch that, dude! And let it stand in the mouth. Yeah! Shit! One of the best moments of my life. One of the most fun, entertaining moments of my life. That was back when the Hollywood Improv Lab was still a workshop room. I don't mm-hmm. know. How do you... Right? Isn't that the best way to say it? Yeah. It was, it was, it was renegade, low-level comedians, us, who couldn't get a lot of stage time anywhere else. Fact. And so we would go into that room. It was just a stage and a black curtain. It was old black box theater. OBBT. OBBT. And... They let us do whatever we want. Yeah. That was one of the coolest moments in my life back when we could do whatever we want on stage. Do you and not feel that you could do whatever you want on stage now? <clears throat> um, I can, but also now I have more of an angle for... you. you I, on stage now, it's like I'm trying to make huge chunks of something that can turn into an hour of comedy to deliver to somebody. How is that different from you doing it back then? Back then, it was more... I, I didn't give a shit about retaining any of that. So you were just having a good time. I, I was just losing it. I, I could connect to that. Yeah, I have a good t- I have such a good time now, but... Back then, I was, it was, if none of that stuff, if, if, if we spent an hour working on stuff and none of it turned out to be anything at right. all, I didn't care. Yeah. Because it was so fun. It was just us, me, you, Brent, Brady, and we were in the lab just losing our minds, having the most fun, and I got naked, and we were beatboxing, and you, and you were rapping. Yeah. And it was wonderful. Anyway... We, this is a gift to show uh, how you can mix comedy with music with it and entertainment. Wow. This is incredible. Hindsight and all the things I can't see in front of me. Justin Timberlake. Um, two questions. One, yeah. uh, do you know that I am illiterate? You're a literate. I'm a literate. I can read. I'm someone who reads often. Yes, I knew you were that. You that you were. That I'm a literate. Yeah, yeah, I'm a literate. Isn't it technically an literate? No, it's a literate. No, it's a literate. I'm right. a, I'm a, I'm a literate. Yeah, I did um, know that. And what was the second thing? <laughs> second of all, was this a regift? Yes. Cool. I don't mind that. Do you mind telling me who gave it to you though? No, I bought it. Um, so I did uh, eight nights of Tyso for the holidays. I did mm-hmm. eight episodes in eight nights. I got gifts for everybody. And mm-hmm. with those gifts, I got everybody uh, this hardbound, beautiful $40 a piece Justin Timberlake book. It's $40? Yeah. And Esther Bravitsky didn't take it. What do you think? Why do you think that is? Uh, you, just, you know, she's got a, she's got her things. Well, that's not funny. No. I don't think it's funny to give someone a gift for them not to take it. I don't think she was trying to be funny. I thought she just didn't appreciate it. Um, I figured that... Well, that's not funny either. She dances. She's playful. I thought that she could learn something from one of the kings of entertainment. Anyway, she didn't take it. And then I, I uh, have this extra book, so I gave it to Pete Holmes. He didn't take it. So, so n- neither nobody took this home with them? Correct. And I've wrapped it up every time. Jesus. Wait, are you going to take it? Yeah, I just think it's disrespectful to not take one of these things. Yeah. You gave it to me. Uh, it wasn't in jest, right? You mean it. Correct. Okay, well, I'm going to take it. Because there have been other people on that I haven't given it to because they, they're not... Like, you blur the lines. You're not just a comedian. You're no. also a podcast host. Yep. A dancer. Yep. A beatboxer. Yep. Give me a beat. Um, what are we talking tempo-wise? Uh, Te- give me the tempo on one, your life. 115? 115? Mm-hmm. 
<clears throat> that's not that. That's pretty slow. Um, oh, you want to impress everybody with a rap god? I don't need to, but I could. Do you want me to? I want a 115. Okay. Let me see that book. Now, you were talking about there's a rhythm to everything, right? But it's more than that for a song to work. It's got register, which is the kind of wong to work. When you push it in the verse, you got the saw to hook. Because the chorus should be hooking when you all you work. Now, watch just think about the melody. Should hit you in a mellow way that every time you come away, you try to remember right. A song is three minutes long. If you're a heavyweight boxer, three minutes is an eternity. If you're a songwriter, three minutes goes by in a heartbeat. Wow. Two, three, four. Yo, songwriting can't be rushed. There's a moment where you can't be pushed. Rush comes in, you can't go it in. When you settle like the bins and you receive the gun, it's gone to friends. Now I wanna ha ha when you pop, pop, clip, clap. Push around when you trip, trip, nick, rap. Now we hold the birds, the word. When you stick it in the permanent and the nouns, the verbs. When you work. That was pretty good. He put the words down. You gave me the rhythm. The truth is, the melody already existed. I just had to see it. Yep. It's already there. You just got to get a hold of it. So, Andrew, real talk, having you back on because mm -hmm. what we did last time I, uh, was something that we decided that we wanted to keep between us. Yeah, it was between you and me. It was personal. Mm -hmm. We got real personal about something. Probably was eating us both alive a little bit. It was nice to get out of the way. It's nice to say it. Communicate with your friends. Sometimes we don't do that. I don't know why. I think it's probably because you care. I think if I like somebody, I probably care and I'm conscious about the relationship via communication. If I didn't really care or like you that much, it probably wouldn't bother me at all. Well, it, this is a tough thing to talk right now because we're not letting people in on what it is that we're talking about, Doesn't nor matter. do we need to. It's not their business. So it just makes it harder for I'll me. I'll just say this. I think everyone who's a fan, any who's a, anybody who's a goblin you mm -hmm. know, or a bopper, I think they probably understand that there's moments that you have in friendship over the years, especially if you've been friends with someone for a substantial amount of time. Yeah, we should. I'd like to set up how you know how well, long we. You were one of my first comedian friends first in Los friend, Angeles. Yeah, one, yeah, it, probably like between you, Fahim, and. Well, I knew you were friends with Brady then because Brady. I met you. Yeah, I was just going to say Brady the, first. I was going to say Brady for sure, Fahim for sure, you, and I can't remember if there was anybody else that I really like met early on that we kind of linked with that got along doing open mics and stuff like that. So anybody you've known for a long time, boppers and goblins, you know that there's moments where you either miscommunicate or don't communicate at all, and it hurts your friendship, and it's probably both people's misinterpretation. No one's wrong. No one's right. It's probably just a moment in time that wasn't communicated correctly. That's what we talked about. Anyway, we've known each other for a long time, and it's wild to see how much and how little we've grown. Expand on that. We're still, we can still have the same amount of fun that we did when we were young in terms of like we connect and it's like, you know, it's probably how my grandma feels when she goes to a luncheon with her high school girlfriends. Like Actually, she did today. we have a clip. Oh, you do? I love having lunch with my high school girlfriends. This is that must be what it feels like when she has lunch with her girlfriends. They have the same kind of goofy conversation they did when they were in high school. That's what she says. She yep. said they talk about the same stuff. So in that regard, we've grown very, you're, very little in the positive way, but in the good way, we've well, grown. Well, that's not a growing. That's changing. You're saying we've grown, but not necessarily have completely changed. Yeah, because but we, we don't need to grow a, away. You don't like growing isn't not connecting. Mm, yeah, but but we we've, we've grown very little in the idea that we haven't grown apart in that regard. But then the grown up we have, we have grown up very much. Life has taken over. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah, you're a married man. What? Not you, but I'm saying one. Yeah. One is a married man. One's well, yeah yeah. The and, royal uh, what? The you, royal man. You have a house, is what I meant to say. I do. People. Yeah, people have homes. You grow and they up, get married. you get married. That's you have a house. Of, that's part of the thing. And uh, a big part of friendship, and I'm sure it's like this other places, but in this job that we have where when we work, it's usually out of town or it's at night. The schedules are very weird. And I found that the friends that I've hold, held on to the most are the ones that live within a 10-minute drive. 
Yeah, outside of that, it's very hard. Yeah, isn't it weird? Like, I have a friend, but they live in Hollywood or they live on the east side, and it's like, uh, you don't want to see him much. You can meet up somewhere halfway. Yeah. Still very hard. But with you and me, uh, I talk, it, it, and there's something about this that feels a little phony, so it'll be easier for me to say this now that I've expressed that. Yep. Just because we literally had a, a lot of this conversation a week ago. Yeah, we did. We had the same conversation. So it almost feels like I'm telling the audience something that I already told you, and yep. I could cut to it, but I, I don't want to keep cutting to it's shit. a lot of editing at some point. It's too much. Yeah. But basically, uh, m the friendship I have with you, outside of the intimate, personal like this is a friend thing mm -hmm. just the the play aspect of it i've never had with anybody what i have with you which is yeah. literally you know and we're not going to cut to anything right now but just th that's what it's like in real life with you yeah going to clubs and then locking eyes there's nothing set up lock eyes and it's not even like you nod to me it's just i look at you you look at me we see there's some girls or some <laughs> people that we want to fuck with so you just say hey you know, you yell at me and you say, I don't want to say what you would say, but just like some shit that is like some something, intense. something that would get someone's attention. Yeah. So everybody's looking and then I just will charge at you <laughs> and we're not even play fighting. I mean, like <laughs> bruises and sores and slapping. It's and actually hitting. very real. I've never had that with anybody. No, before. I've never had that with anyone before. In fact, in fact, I had a moment. I had a moment in Denver where. Sounds like a, the, sounds like a movie. It is. A moment in Denver. Yeah. Do you, Jay Baruchel's in it? Have you ever seen it? Yes. It's very good. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Coincidentally, though, you're just saying you also had a moment. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, I had a moment in Denver where the gentleman that was opening for me, who's hilarious, Chris O'Connor, is phenomenal. Shout out to Chris O'Connor. Big time. I thought these two people after the show were friends of his. Like, you know, there's stragglers after a show at some point. I'm assuming they're his friends because everyone's kicked out at this point. Right. Why do they feel like they could still be here? Yes. And this girl was blacked out. And so Are you allowed rude. to say that anymore? What's, can I, am I allowed to say blacked out? Yeah, isn't that... Well, okay, I'm sorry, browned out. I shouldn't say black. Brown. She was browned out. Because um, it wasn't it wasn't head-to-toe makeup, but it was a lot of it. I don't know, something about it still feels... And I just said to her, something feels racist about saying blacked out? The whole thing feels racist. Could you say white out? I feel like you can. So if someone gets so drunk, is it a white out? Yeah. If they're a white person, it's a, you white out. If they're a black person, it's a... African-American doubt. Right, and if it's a brown person, it's a. I don't know what. See, you're and that's the problem. We need to. We need. That's the problem. That's why it has to be. You right. Gra you grade out. I think that's. We gra I think I grade for everybody. Out. Everyone grade out. Everybody grade out. Because the idea of being something being gray means something's vague, right? Right. You don't remember, it, so I grayed out last night. Right. I so, like that. Uh, boppers and goblins, we're gonna switch some of that rhetoric up in re in the Could real. Could you say world. rhetoric, or should we say rhetoric? Rhetoric's fine just because my people don't get a lot of respect to begin with. Oh, so you were thinking red as ginger. I was thinking red as Native American. Ooh. Because of, like... The... We don't call them Native Americans anymore. What do you say? Indigenous people. Interesting. Firsts. Also, they're also called firsts. firsts. You know, people in the comment section, first. That's also what indigenous people are called, firsts. Could, how do we get the, the firsts into the grayed out uh, spectrum? Ooh. I guess that's a bigger question. That's a bigger than question. Right. That's something I can't answer. I feel that it starts at home. I feel like it's... Uh, you think it's social or cultural? I th I think it's... Or it's I, th it's... I think it's taught. I think just like any hate is taught. Babies don't come out of the womb saying, you know, uh, I, I don't like Jews. Well... We'll, we'll cut to a clip. Yeah. <laughs> 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 We're not going to make an edit there, but this is where, you know, if there's a production, we have, a, you know, a baby or, yeah. you know, a kid wearing one of those God, hats. I would love that. Yeah. I would love that so much. Maybe we'll just have your grandma call back in and just say... I like Jews. Yeah. You want her to do that? That's really funny. If she goes... If she goes... I like Jews. <sighs> Lying. Doesn't make sense as much though because it's a ba it would be a baby saying. No, I know, I agree, but you that was your idea. The grandma baby thing was my idea. I don't remember, but I guess I could take responsibility for Doesn't that. Doesn't really matter. So you were saying this woman at a, uh, at a club oh, in Denver, yeah. she uh, she grayed out. She grayed out pretty heavily, and her boyfriend was being very nice and was a very large fan, and she continued to say that to me over and over and over. He's such a big fan. He's such a big fan. And something rude that people often do is they say, "I don't know who you are, and I right. don't care," which I don't need to know that. That's fine. You yeah. could just say he's a big fan. I don't need to know that you're a big fan or not. You could just say he's a big fan. He was. We took photos. Then after the fact, Chris was kind of coming in and out. Chris. Chris. Oh, doubt. Your, your Chris. feature. Yeah. 
O'Connor. Um, he he was moving about, so I thought he was with that. These guys were with him. I just inherently was like, this must be his friends. So I was being very polite. But it took everything inside of me to not be rude to her because she kept doing that thing, grayed out, going, I don't care who you are. I don't even know you. I don't care who you are. Now, do you say... I don't care, do and you, I don't do care you about say, you, but he likes you. But I'm just saying, I'm being honest. She goes, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going to lie to you. I don't care. And if I had someone like you there, I could have gotten away with doing one of, something that we do, what we, we were just referencing. We, I could have fucked with her. But but because I was alone, and I assume that must be his friend, I couldn't. Now, fuck if you with thought her. it was my friend, you would have fucked with her. One hundred percent, because you know me better. You know that because, because our relationship extends in such a different way. So you know that I wouldn't be mad at you. One hundred percent. Where you're worried that Chris may think you crossed a boundary. Not worried, but more. Uh, I don't want to put him in that position. Gotcha. You're right. And you you trust that I could handle that position. One hundred, but more than anybody in the so world. So if that's if they're with me, or if you think they might be with me, and I'm not in the room, how do you handle that? The drunk girl? Yeah. I, I explained to her how big of a fan I am of her and her work and divulged very deeply and heavily about how much I really appreciate what she does. And I won't stop. Okay. Uh, I'll, I'll Let's be do here. It. Okay. Uh, one sec. Hi. What's your name again? Uh, Andrew. Andrew, Santino. yeah, you were pretty funny. Um, I don't know who you are, but my boyfriend's a huge fan of yours. That's very nice. Thank you. Uh, that's very nice. Good to meet you. But can I tell you something? Yeah, he likes you. I don't know you. I don't. I, I don't really like that kind of. Comedy. I am such a fan of yours. What do you mean? I mean, I've seen what you've done, and I really appreciate what you've done what for do everything. You mean? I think you're one of the most talented, beautiful, brilliant people I've ever seen in my entire life. Are you taking your clothes off? No. Are you just fingering yourself? No. Yeah. That's wonderful. Yeah. Do you mind if I smell it? Do you mind if I taste it? Do you mind if I smell it? No, I don't do that. You don't want me to do that. Don't do it. Yeah, that was... That was kind of how it would... That's how it would go. Gotcha. Something like that. You're... Uh, when you were single and you would go on the road yeah. and then there's a girl that's grayed out and yeah. she comes up to you and tell me how you would handle this situation if I were pretty yeah. but annoying you and you're single and you're on the road. I'm out. Okay? But I want to see at what moment... Oh, you want to see it play out? I want to see what, at what moment are you interested and All then right. once you're out, how you handle it. Perfect. But at first, you're interested because okay. you don't know how annoying I am yet. Okay. Okay? Okay. All right. Hi. Hey. How are you? Good. Good. Did you enjoy the show? Yeah. Do you want to do a photo or something? or? Can we do a boomerang? Sure. Yeah, for sure. Sorry, I left my phone over here. No problem. Did you come to the show alone? No. Who'd you come with? Woo! My girlfriends. Oh, how many? Ten. Ten girls. That's awesome. Thanks yeah, for coming. Yeah, Brittany's getting married. Oh, that's great. You're a bachelorette party. No. No, just a bunch of girls that went out just on the occasion that this girlfriend of yours was getting married by coincidence? No, she's just getting married, and I'm excited for her. Oh, so you guys, this is girls' night? Yeah. Wonderful. Well, let's do that boomerang. My phone is out of batteries. Can I use your phone? No, definitely not. Maybe could I charge my phone at your hotel room? Are you asking to come over to my hotel room? Just to charge my phone. Hmm. Is that a euphemism? Uh, it could be a it could be an euphemism if you play my cards right. Ooh, I don't know how to play cards, but I do know how to charge your phone. So maybe we could go to your room. It'd be very easy for me to charge my phone with your phone using your phone's wire. I want you to peg me. What? Mm -hmm. What does that mean? I want you to put on a strap on and, and put it inside my tush. I'll do it. I'll do it. Okay. Let's cut to your hotel room. At this point, I don't know. I don't know. I have no idea. Uh, so I just post this now? <laughs> Is anybody still watching this? <laughs> I'm sure people are still watching the show. Uh, it's very entertaining. Is it? You're going to have to cut that in. You'll have to cut that in. Yeah, I know. I'll cut it in. I'll post it beforehand. Um, so it's just because there's so many things that I loved about what we talked about the last podcast, but some of it we said we didn't want to put in. And also after I synced it up, I saw one of the cameras went out and it's just like, fuck it, we're doing it again. But I just want to, I want to talk with you a little bit more about podcasting because Let's do it. podcasting has been uh, my life for the past seven months. I know it's incredible. And you're doing, you're doing almost everything by yourself. Uh, Perry, thank you so much. Who's for, Perry? Perry's the guy that, that you were saying looked like Blake Griffin earlier. No, I don't remember. Uh, Perry's a buddy of mine. He uh, he helps me edit. Oh, okay. And it has been a huge help. Uh, I also have a buddy, Pepe. Shout out to Pepe. He's been helping me. Pepe. I'm glad you say huge. What do you mean? 
I say huge. Say huge. Huge. A lot of people say huge. People's, people live out the H. They say huge. Interesting. You've never heard that before? Uh-uh. I mean, Trump is probably the most notorious. People make fun of him for saying, he says huge. New Yorkers tend to say huge. Hmm. It's, oh, it's very huge. I don't like it. There's an H there for a reason. Yeah, but sometimes there are letters there for no reason. Like in, Give me one. Uh, the T in buffet. I say buffet. I know you do, but I'm saying it's not that other people don't, so what's the reason? Well, they should. I'm saying they should. So you, why are they leaving it out? Th- no, I leave in all the letters. Uh, Kalur. C-O-L-O-U-R. Kalur. How do you say T-H-E-A-T-R-E? T-H-E. R-T-R-E. Theater. Right. Yeah, theater. Because some people spell it T-H-E-R. Some people tell it R-E and E-R, and I was wondering what your thoughts on that are. It doesn't matter how you spell it as long as you say it the right way that it's spelled. Gotcha. Yeah. Right. Shoes. S H O E S. Right. Shoes. Uh huh. Spell it differently. S O E S H S. Show us your Still tits. The same. Huh? Show us your tits. Show us your tits. Remember when that was a thing you, like, that was a saying? Show your tits. That was like an actual saying. Yeah. Do you ever moon people out the back of a school bus? I was bus? just thinking about that one too. I, a kid did it to me the other day. I'm not kidding. <laughs> And it made me laugh so hard. It made me laugh so hard, so genuinely laugh, like a genuine laugh, because I knew what I I knew me doing that all the time to people, and I also knew the the excitement he's getting because he might get caught. Maybe getting caught is the most fun thing in the world, and the bus driver sees you a little bit. Have you ever had public sex? Yeah. Oh yeah. Have you ever gotten caught doing it? Uh, no. I've never been caught. No. What was the question? Why did you say no with with the up inflection? Because I was gonna cut to my attorney. I have no. I have to ask my attorney. Have I ever been caught having sex in public? Mm, I think if you ever have to answer that, just say no. But so you're not bound by law. Say no, but go like this. No. Yeah. So I've never. No, I've never had. What is the appeal to having sex in public to you? Is it the getting caught thing? Yeah. I think people have sex in public get caught. It certainly isn't comfortable, especially most most of the ways or positions you would have sex wouldn't be comfortable at all. What do you mean? Well, you have to find something in public that would be comfortable for either you or You mean the... literally comfortable, like to how, where your knees mm-hmm. are going to be physically, or where you're sitting? Physically comfortable. Got you. Like yeah. s- sex in a bathroom on an airplane isn't comfortable because no, of the space, not because no. you're going to get caught. You're right. It's, it, it's hot because you might get caught. But isn't there something about, if it's hot because you might get caught, isn't there something then that's a turn on about actually getting caught? There's a part of you that wants people to see it. Well, sure. You know, they say like every, every murderer, every serial killer wants to get caught. Who says that? They did. The serial killers. Mm. At any point, they go, I wanted to get caught. Do they want to get caught or they wanted the recognition? That's why they leave. Both. Both. Mm. If you don't get caught, you don't get the recognition. They're one and the same. Not necessarily. Banksy. He gets the recognition, but nobody knows who he is. Yeah, but I bet you he wants it so bad. You think so? Mm -hmm. That's why I think Mr. Brainwash is Banksy. I actually... uh, Never mind. Go for it. No, I know he's not, actually. Um, I'm getting Banksy on the podcast. Look at that. And how is he gonna? How is he gonna appear? Uh, he a lot of snaps. There. He keeps the footage, and he's going to uh, modulate and put a, a shadow over his face. We're not even lighting that side of the room. That's wonderful. Uh huh. How'd you reach out to him? Instagram. Dope. Yeah. That's great. Uh, I I uh, created a fan account for Banksy. Uh, Banks at Banksy fans. At Banksy fans on Instagram. It's it's got like almost nine million followers now. And uh, on the posts, uh, I've been contacted a lot by somebody asking me questions and turned out to be Banksy. That's nuts. And he said he would come on. Or he said he would come on. I don't want to... Yeah, yeah, yeah. But You don't want to assume the gender. I actually Not know... Not in this day and age. Yeah. But, That's wild. Yeah, I know. That's really fun. I went on Stevie Weeby's podcast. Do you, have you ever been on there? Do you know him? No, yeah, but... Uh, I know exactly. I know obviously who he is, but I don't. I've no, we've never. I am supposed to do his show. Uh, it's a. It's you could be wacky on it. I had a really good time yeah. on it. It's Bobby Lee's brother's podcast, the Stevie Weeby Show, and on it, we were talking, and I'm in character, and I'm being goofy, uh-huh. and there was a moment where I don't remember how it came up, but he asked who like my favorite guest is or who my favorite guest is going to be, and I said, I'm about to have Will Smith on the show. And he said, are you serious? And I like, yeah. And I gave this elaborate story of how we met at a bowling alley in 2003. And then we ran into each other at my agent's office. And, and then he said again, wait, is this for real? And I went, no. And then he said, that's crazy. When is he going to be on? And I realized he didn't <laughs> hear me. So I then looked to camera and was like, you know, acknowledging the audience who heard me say no. Yeah. And I was being like, uh, 
okay, well, I feel like you didn't hear me, so I'm just gonna keep going with it then. So and he's coming on in February, and then it just <laughs> and then we talked about it for a while. Obviously, Will Smith isn't coming on the podcast. Everybody knows that because I said no to it. And then I acknowledge it to camera. I guess I'm going to keep going. And I get comments all the time. When is Will Smith coming on? And they're not jokes. I know at least some of them aren't because I saw on Stevie's comments that this fool said that that he was getting Will Smith. He's fucking lying. And it's like, yeah, I'm not really getting Will Smith on. Well, is he coming on? I want to not do any bit with you right now to talk about something serious. It blows my fucking mind how stupid people are. Yeah, well, I mean, what? Yeah, yes. What do you mean? You've met hu- enough humans by now to know. It always does. It doesn't blow my mind anymore. I'm being genuine. I, you met enough humans at some point in your life, and you go, I get it. This is just it's the normal still, way. Yeah, you know what? Maybe it's hyperbole. Maybe it doesn't blow my mind the way it used to. No, yeah, it doesn't. Because it used to be I didn't. I truly didn't understand where the like where is the disconnect on this? Am I being fucked with? I did this. I did. Um, well, part of those people are joking. They're clever enough, you podcast listeners, that they. Know I that understand it's part of the joke. that some of but this is some trolling. Some people are just yeah. plain because I'm watching. Um, I saw some Reddit forums where people are talking about it, and people are going back and forth, battling. No, he was joking. No, he said it was. Well, why would he lie? Why would he take advantage of Stevie's show? He's just looking to get press. And it's like what? Well, this is the problem. This is the inherent problem with comedy podcasts, right? I mean, true. I'm being serious. So often we are not being serious, right? That when we are being somewhat serious, those that have a keen sense of conversation skills can tell. But I don't think everybody does. Here's a better example. I did Segura's show. Tom always leads me into bits. Mm -hmm. Always. It's part of their shit. That's just what they do on the show. Right. And I talked heavily about being in love with this guy, Rick. Coincidence, yes. Uh, and, and, And it's just this gay love story that I made up. Okay? Yes. I said I quit comedy to do porn with Rick. Mm-hmm. The amount of people that got angry at me and were like, what a loser, a cop-out, a, 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 a coward. You're going to quit comedy now after what you've been given? Opportunities just so you because you think porn is the answer? People were genuinely upset and also got mad at me for running a bit about Rick. If they didn't believe the bit and they knew it was fake, they still got mad because they were like, this is such a try-hard bit. Mm. This is this is such a try-hard bit. They led me into the bit. That's what I do when I go on that show. They want me to do those bits. Mm-hmm. And I got to tell you something. It's all real. All of it is real. None of it is fake. I did the sixth lead with you. Yeah, what a good show. Thank you so much. I had so much fun. I did think my role was going to be bigger. Uh, it was until on the day and Not we saw lie, your performance. I did think my role was going to be bigger. Knowing knowing what I'm capable of and who I am, I was a little surprised. Yeah, it was written a lot bigger, um, but you know, I, you didn't have it that day. So I have it every day. I've, there's never a day that I don't have it. Uh, you gave a little bit more weight to the girl who was on Undateable. What was her name? It still is, Allison. Yeah, nobody cares. Nobody cares what? Nobody cares. And that's the problem. Nobody cares. People care that's my best friend's wife! Fuck me. Fuck me. Fine. Fuck me. Fine! I guess I care. I'm sorry. And thanks for having me on. So what I was saying is that uh, in the sixth lead where I played myself, yeah, at the end of it, it said written and directed by Rick Glassman. And I would get messages from people who thought the whole thing was real, like it was a reality show. It was? There's a question. It was. Point is, people who are watching this, if you don't think the jokes are funny... That's fine. Yeah. But I do get a, a little bit confused when stuff that's so odd. Like, I bet you there will people be watching this who still say, Rick said that Banksy's is, Banksy's about to be on the podcast. He is. So, Banksy, how long have you been creating art? I don't create art. I am a vessel. Wow. The art goes through my fingers. If you were to say that the art is a waffle. I am nothing more than a fork and a knife. 
Wow. That is... Wow. One, just one waffle? If it's like one waffle would be the equivalent of uh, like one spray paint thing that I do. So if I do like a spray paint thing, like if I do a... If stencil? A, like a stencil? Yeah, like a person watering a flower right. that's in the crack on a wall in a tough area. That would be like one waffle. But what I'm saying is I didn't make that. I, the waffle exists. I am nothing more than a fork and knife or at most the syrup. The syrup would be the paint. Uh-huh. The, okay. So the artwork that I do or I don't do it is a waffle that I'm just a fork and knife and I use syrup. I use syrup to paint it. Is this, you, is this real syrup? You use actual syrup? Canadian or American? No, it's the paint. Oh, 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 I'm lost. I'm, I'm lost. I'm saying that I am lost. as a metaphor. I've been creating art for like 15 to 25 years now. There it is. I just want people to know at home that even off screen we're doing bits. Never stops. Andrew. Andrew? Correct. Andrew. I did this I did that on on CB show. I explained to him how like if you really want to take control of a, of a of a room and get someone's attention, you ask the name 3 times. You say the name the first time you say the name that you think you know. Yeah. Then you say it in a question and then you it's confirmed so then you say it the most confidently. So it goes Andrew? Andrew? Yeah. Andrew. Do you understand that? Yeah, yeah. Bum, bum, bum. Yeah, so it's first you think you know it, then you question it, and then you definitely know it after the person says yes. Well, so you're going the wrong way on your scale. It goes, so it would go like this? this is, the scale is, is, is steps. Yeah, but no, because it, because it would go like this. You think you know it. Then you want to go down here? Yeah. So you question if you know it. And then you definitely know it. That's correct. Right, so I was, just, again, going as far as an algorithm is concerned. I'm just saying that's concerned. incorrect. I'm just saying the layout is incorrect. It's correct. It's incorrect. It's correct. One, two, three. It's correct? Yeah. It's correct. So I did this with him for like 10 minutes, and he couldn't get the order of it. Well, and you do know because he ha that is a learning disability that he has. Uh, name orders? Name orders is like one of the biggest issues that Korean people have had. Really? Does yeah, Bobby have that? Oh, God, does he ever. How would Bobby... So, so it would go... So if I were to ask you this, it would be like, Andrew. Yeah. Andrew? Yeah. So don't say yeah until the second one. Yeah. Andrew. Andrew? Yeah. Andrew... If Bobby were to do it, mm -hmm. how would he respond to it? How would he say this to me? You be Bobby, I'll be Rick. <laughs> Rick? Rick? <laughs> Rick? <laughs> that's how he do it. Nice, man. Yeah, that's pretty on the nose. You know, we know what Tom Cruise does? Tell me. I Actually, don't, don't tell me. I don't know. Oh, perfect. I don't I have no. I literally have no idea. I, I, like, I want to know what he does in those kind of situations. I feel like he'd make... Make something good out of nothing. I'd like you to do Stevie's show. It's a good time. I'm going to do it, actually. We already communicated about cool. it. Cool. Cut back for a second. He, the Tom Cruise does do this thing where he goes, he meets people on set. He, do you know about this? He's notorious. He meets everyone on set. Knows all the names. Very respectful. And he goes like this. He goes, Rick. Rick. R. Rick. Rick is radical. Radical Rick. Rick is radical. And he remembers your name. That's cool. Yeah, it's name and it's letter and word association. So you say L -A -W -A. Rick. L-A-W-A. Which is one of the oldest teachings from the University of Michigan. That's right. Where? Go Wolverines, Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. um, big house, the big house. Um, Rick. Rick is R. R is Rick. Rick is radical. Radical is Rick. You're Rick. Could you give me a beat for a minute? 100%. Tempo. Also, also, tempo. Uh, 115 again. Yeah. I also would like people to know that, because there's been a lot of bits on this, and uh, probably I, the whole thing. I do want to be sincere in a moment, and I figure I don't want to just do jokes and then be sincere, so I want to, almost like a bridge, Yeah. Uh, I want to be able to speak to you honestly, but through a, 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 a different type of energy. Do you mind if I do a trumpet as if it's a jazz club? I don't mind. Okay, great. Ready? I've never been ready. And you know what's interesting? This is interesting, and this is something I want people to hear. Just because you're not ready doesn't mean you're not ready. Because not being ready is a mindset. But call to action is an actual action. So if you're not ready mm -hmm. and you go, mm -hmm. what supersedes that? The action or the feeling of the lack of action that has since been in place? So when somebody asks me, am I ready? I'm no longer in fear of not being ready because you know what I think to myself? Nope. And that's exactly where I'm supposed to be. Two, three, four. <laughs> Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 
Thank you. That was uh, Smooth Jazz coming live to you at KWXQR. We are coming to you live from Rick Glassman's apartment. It's Andrew Santino. Rick Glassman, thanks for joining me today. Rick, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Good. You're starting your album tour coming out. You got a brand new album coming out called Once Upon a Time in Denver. Should be good. Thanks. It was uh, It's actually written because my wife and I met in Denver. No? Yeah, we met when I was 17. She was, I think she was 15. I'm telling you no. What I'm saying is no. No, you didn't. Rick, you have terrible dementia. We're here to let you know that. This is actually an intervention. You've had some trouble recently remembering things. These cameras are actually not real. Those are people. That's your uncle. That's your aunt. That's your neighbor. You know what would be funny? <laughs> Dude, if, 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 if this were a real intervention yeah. and you were really doing it yeah. and you are actually, you're crazy. Yeah. And you really thought you that was my uncle and my grandma and you were coming this in and to see like if that were happening yeah. and you weren't joking and to see my friend who is so lost but he is doing this you know this is your grandma that's not actually a camera that's your <laughs> uncle and that's your best friend and it's like do you at what point do you not laugh and you get scared for your friend you get I'm scared right away what if you you know how uh, interventions always take place in a hotel conference room yeah what if you walked into one of those on accident like if you're just walking around a hotel and you just walked in on one you're like oh sorry it, I, Sorry, I just I wanted to see the whole Hilton. I, if I walked into it and it wasn't obvious that I wasn't supposed to be there, if everybody assumed that, oh, you, he's with somebody the way that you thought, it. I would be not to poke fun at, and I would I'd be very interested in just watching walk, it, watching, Oof. and not knowing anybody's story and seeing if I, you know what, this intervention is wrong. Yeah, he's fine. He's fine. You guys are making a big deal out of nothing. And they, they would say, he's been huffing computer air for, I mean, you know, air, uh, computer cleaner for two years. What's the difference between computer air and comp computer cleaner? I, well, computer air is what comes out. You know when you turn on a computer, it goes, Ooh, that's the air. Oh, I thought you were talking about those cans with a straw that turn upside cleaner. down. But that's just compressed air. That's right. And that's just, as I was saying before. There's chemicals in there, There's though. chemicals in there, though. Mm -hmm. T-C-I-T-T. That's the brand, is that the brand name? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Andrew. This podcast, uh, compared to the first podcast we did, yeah. though we did a ton of bits in the first one. We definitely did. I think that this one feels, this is me being very sincere. Okay. This one feels, I'm confused as to whether or not, not if it's good or if it's bad. It's good. But if we're showing, an, if people know who we are, yeah. then this is, then, then great. Oh, they're doing their thing. But what, what I liked about the first one, for a lot of parts of it that we don't have now, yeah. is that it really showed a lot of dimensions of us, uh, of our relationship, Yeah, where... Let's talk about it. Well, yeah, I mean, we can. The, the podcast is like... I mean, I would love to have you back on still, but... Uh, can this I is, come back next week? I'll be out of town. We just... We should do a... Uh, we should do like <laughs> five or six of these, yeah. and then I should just take clips from them all and do like a best of, even though none of the other ones came out. And we could both be sitting on the couch and I kind of setting that. up. I'm not going to organize that. We could do that. that thing where we would watch. We we tape us watching the like podcast. mystery science theater. I would love that. Will you do that? Any no, I, I've thought about doing that with podcasts that came out, but logistically, it's a pain in the ass. We would just hire someone to do it. No, I'm saying like to no. Do we would hire people to be us, and we would have to do <laughs> yeah, it. At all. Yeah, right. I mean, <laughs> it's already Perry. He's already you know going to be pulling his hair out Who doing this. Who the fuck is Perry? Perry is the guy that was earlier here. Oh, I didn't like him. If he was still here, I would, you know, have him come back. <laughs> yeah. Like call him to come over. You could always just use that clip again. I'm not gonna. It's just kind of cheap. We could show our dimensions of who we really are. Let's get into something serious. Let's get into some serious well, talk. It's, I, don't, I don't even need to do that I right now. I love your family. Thank you. You know, one of my most cherished pictures that I have in my phone of all the nonsense photos is me partying with your dad in Montreal. Man, Wasted. was that fun. I was on Mushrooms. And your dad is such a fun-loving, sweet, fucking, like, like edible, consumable human being. I want to set up how my dad got there real quick. Yeah, okay, do it. I just want to finish the statement. That's all. I just was saying he was so much fun to be around, and I was very high on drugs, and I felt a little uncomfortable, and your dad made me feel very comfortable. I won't set it up then. I just was very comfortable with your father, and I was very high on drugs. So my dad is no stranger to a man on drugs. But, I know. But I want to say that, uh, so that was, I had done Montreal, uh, for those of you who don't know what that is, just for laughs, some comedy fans know what that is. It's yeah. the biggest comedy festival in the world. But if you're not world. a comedy fan, let them know. It, used, it was a That's very what I'm it's prestigious a, it's thing. The, it's the biggest stand-up comedy festival in the world. Except for 
Make 'em Ha Ha, Germany's biggest festival. Have you ever done it? Make 'em Ha Ha? Yeah. I couldn't I wouldn't even be on their, you know, considerable list. Who are usually the comedians that are on Make It Ha Ha? Uh Yakov Smirnov, uh Carrot Top. It's usually just them, right? Isn't it just it's, two or it's, three comedians? They, it's them two, and I think sometimes they'll have they'll have like one host. Remember well, I shouldn't. I don't want to break. It's his business, not mine. But do you do you remember the first season of Last Comic Standing? No. So just for laughs, the guy that was in the audience. <laughs> no, man. Mark Bofeld. He's the one that hosts it. All right, that doesn't sound like a festival. That just sounds like a show with three comics. It's a great show. It's the biggest one in Berlin. So other than the uh, hahas for tits or whatever it's called. Yeah. Just for laughs, I had done it. Uh, Four years in a row, and this was the fifth year, and my parents, for whatever reason, not that they should have come, parents don't usually come to this, but my parents live in Cleveland, this is in Montreal, it's not that far, and I was like, I want my parents, it's like camp, right? Yeah. Like, you all stay in the same hotel, and everyone's doing bits, and everyone sees each other, and you don't know who's going to be there until you get there, and then you, a lot of your friends are there. So I had my parents come, and a couple of days before we went to Montreal, I posted, and I've put it on this, this before, I'll cut to a clip now, this replenish video. I love that. Where uh, my dad saw that I was recording him, and when my dad sees that I'm recording him, turns he, it up. he turns it on. He oh, like yeah. even you can notice he looks to the camera, it gets a little smile, and then he's just he's just it's like he just did drugs just from seeing him recording. Yeah. And my my cousin didn't fill the sodas in the fridge. My mom was upset, so my dad goes off. We'll cut to a clip. You're supposed to take the co- the warm ones and fill it up after you finish. You didn't have one today. I, I, said, oh, I saw you have a soda pop today. I had one yesterday. Oh, one okay. million yesterday. You had a million. But yesterday. I definitely might. You're supposed to replenish. Listen. You take the car oh, and refill you the refrigerator. God damn it. I can't believe it. I never had anything after you've been here. Oh fuck! <laughs> if I taught you anything, I taught you to replenish. Seriously, fuck! Refrigerator, everything, everything. Refrigerator in the basement. And if you went downstairs in the basement and got a soda, what was the fucking rule? Uh, you'd replenish. <laughs> okay. What the fuck? Danny doesn't fucking replenish. No, I, I listen. I think it's a microcosm of more serious things. But, uh, you know. <laughs> hey, you know what? I'm fucking done. I, I'm, I'm serious. I'm so pissed off. And such a good bit. A lot of comedians, a lot of our friends saw that and thought that was really funny and my dad became like famous within my group of friends from that video Mm -hmm. so a few days later my dad and mom come to montreal and there are a lot of comedians uh eric griffin is one in particular i remember because my dad knows eric and likes eric but eric's never met my dad and in the hotel room eric see or in the hotel lobby eric sees my dad and says mr glassman and comes over and hugs him and there's a lot of comedians that know my dad so that's going to feel good for anybody. Yeah. So people know my dad. They know he's funny. So my dad is fucking, you know, moving he's along with it. He's it. getting high. Oh, yeah. And it was a really... And they're coming to see me do shows in front of... they, You know, they're in big audiences. They're, they haven't seen me do that kind of stuff before. Yeah. And doing well. And it was like a cool... Seeing my parents see me... Seeing me through my parents' eyes. And that of like, I've done this show, this thing for five years. It's fun. I'm not doing my own hour show. I love it here, but it's just another thing I'm doing. Yeah. And then to be reminded how cool this lifestyle is and the friends that I have and what I'm doing by seeing my parents see me in these little theaters and I'm killing and it's fun. And uh, then there are some friends that my dad does know. So my dad's already in a good place. And then my dad sees you and you guys go off. At first we did it. I still have the picture. I, I actually yeah. I put that up. I know what you're talking about yeah. now. But I know my dad is now like smoking with people that he doesn't know <laughs> and just hanging out with my friends and shit. My dad, it was a really, really, really cool trip. Your dad is down to break off. Your dad is down. Yeah. Your dad's somebody that'll go, I'll be right back. And he can break off and go do something fantastic on his own. It's He's nice tr- to not have to host your yeah, parents. Yeah, you don't have you to. Know? He's a trustworthy dude. You just know he's going to be fine, figure it out, not need your help. That's a hard thing to do in big crowds. That's a, Especially when he know, knows, I mean, literally almost knows nobody. He knows a few people, but mm-hmm. it's very personal, right? The, those that he knows. Obviously, they're because they're close to you. It, that's kind of That kind of thing is very nice to have. That's one of those wonderful moments in comedy when you appreciate you appreciate what we get to do for, for a job. It's fucking unreal. It hits me often. In fact, it hits me the hardest when I'm on the plane flight home. What, like so, the way that you just had to do something? Because I'm so excited to go home. Yeah. And and at the same time, I feel all this elation from what happened. So I feel so good about what took place. And 
reflecting on it. And I usually write on the plane on my way home. I take notes and listen down to what I write was doing. Write your sets. Huh? So you listen to your whole sets? Yeah. So you do six shows? Yeah. And they're about an hour each? Yeah, oh, just over an hour, yeah. So you're listening to six and a half hours? Yeah. You listen to every set? Almost every set, yeah. Wow. Um, unless it's what I call a kill set, what I put down in my phone as a kill set, which means Meaning it was that the, the, the worst of the shows. What about stuff that was like, it was all crowd work? Um, those are my favorites to listen because to. Because then it's stuff that you maybe could redo material. again. Yeah. So what's that process? You go and you listen, and are you listening for what you think's funny, or are you listening for what gets the biggest laughs? Both. Actually, I mark that separately in my iPad. So you write down, I like this, they like this. There's one that literally says, me, them. I'm not kidding. Now, what about when both of them like it? Do you start? It has a check mark next to it. So what is it? There's a, It's there's... almost like you know my process. I'm dead serious. This so, is literally what I do. So there's three columns. There's what the joke is, and then you check off, I liked it, they no, liked no, no. it. I, I, I will write the I will write the, an abbreviated version of either the joke, or if it's a or if it's a a new conversational joke that I have with crowd work, I write out the whole thing. I stop and start, I stop and start it. And at the end of it, I will write me or them. And at the beginning of it, where a hashtag might go, that's a check mark. It's either a check mark or nothing at all. What's the check mark for? The check mark delineates that I liked it and they liked it as well. Oh, so at the end, if so if it's just I liked it, it just says that at the end. Yes. So then when you go back and look, do you really just look for the check mark ones? No. No, because I, I do me and them, and I kind of categorize it then as such of where I'm going to place it, depending on if I'm going to do it again. So you have, where is this? Is this handwritten? iPad. So you have a document, and do you set? Notes, in my notes. And is it yeah. all together, or is it based on weekends or shows? Based on cities, yeah. It'll say Denver. Boop. So when you go back to Denver, you go to the Denver one, almost as if Denver has a certain vibe? No, 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 not at all. That's to carry me on to my next city, because I'm working on an hour. So each so chapter. So hopefully when I go back, that will be gone. Each chapter is basically the city you were at. So it's the weekend. Yeah, kind of, yeah. And then when do you go and look? So on the plane home, which you can't finish because that's six and a half hours of listening, plus you're rewinding. I do it when I get home at night. So you do so on the plane, you get home, and then you have this. When do you read it? When do I read what? All those notes. Oh, when I fly to a new city. So when you're going, so you go tomorrow to a new city. You're going to open your notes and you're going to look through your iPad and you pick a random city and you look for your. I'll, I'll pick the city that I feel like I. Like, like look, I did. Minnesota and Madison back to back, and I had stronger sets in my opinion in Madison and Minnesota. So I know now when I go to my next city, I'm going to look on the plane at Minnesota. I might peruse Madison, but I know it wasn't what I really. As loved. you go forward, do you ever go back in time a month and look at those Minnesota notes again, or is it just for the next weekend? It, it really depends on because I've kind of started to continue to whittle down city to city to city. When there's a joke that I know that works for me and works for them that I know I don't need to manipulate anymore, I kind of put it aside so to speak and do you write that down somewhere mm -hmm. those are handwritten down and those are so here's your test ones and yeah. then you have the basically writing in pen over here yes oh, yeah the, the pen my book my book is basically finished bits right yeah and the ipad because it's manipulated so heavily i was sick of writing in books over and over and over on top and on top and scribble and scratch and scribble and scratch it became it gave me such anxiety i already have bad anxiety so it made it worse so I was like, oh, I can do this on an iPad, erase stuff, change stuff, move stuff digitally, and it doesn't scare me as much as handwriting. What's your process of having a joke that you know is funny, but the audience didn't connect with it? How do you build that differently than the ones that the audience likes? I do that joke as much as I can until I know I can't do it anymore, and I put it aside, and I swear to God on my life, within a couple of months, it inevitably will come back into another joke that I've already written organically. Right. And for some reason, it'll work. Like I have, I have, I'm not going to tell a joke, but I do a joke right now that that is exactly what happened. People didn't like it. The, the reason was I wasn't saying it the right way. I've, I've had, I'm doing jokes now that I did I know before I moved that. to Los I was Angeles. I ask you, I know you've done jokes where they didn't connect as well then that and they do now. And, and it was less the joke and more me not knowing how to do it. It's a presentation. Yeah. Always. Like I just said, it's how I said it. For you, it might be how, how you how you gave it to them because you might be saying it with the same you know, same what verbiage. i found is certain jokes work after i have earned their trust yes. like there's a joke that i cannot open with and i could only do if like an algorithm i could do this joke if 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 they've at some, if, if they're in if they're on board yeah what i found i work i get received best if i train the audience consciously or otherwise yeah to question what I'm doing. They yeah, don't have yeah. to know what I'm doing, but they have to know that they don't know what I'm doing. Oh, uh, yeah. So when they when they think, I know what he's doing, this is no good, as opposed to, wait a minute, then I'm good. Right. As long as they take a second to think. And so I have to do jokes now. I open with certain jokes where it's silly, I'm not winking to them, but undoubtedly they know that I did it on purpose. That's why I have right. some props now. I do shit with a puppet. I do shit with headphones. I do silly, silly stuff because 
think it's like it or not, you know what my intention was. And once they know that I'm doing things, I'm fucking around a little bit. Yeah. Then it kind of allows me to live in this n- the world with new physics. Yes. And, there are no rules at that point. And I lived in that. I've lived in that world forever. So when I'm doing jokes, hey, man, I'm in a pool. So look at me doing flips in slow motion. Right. But people don't know I'm in a pool. And they're like, what the fuck is this? This is re- weird. So the biggest thing that I've learned where my comedy took a turn, and I'm, I'm, I'm doing some of the same jokes now I did a while ago, is I'm letting the audience, in a way, know how I think, as opposed to just me be a cartoon character. Yeah, that's important. Yeah. I mean, that's a huge growth aspect as a comedian. And it was this. It was a, the littlest thing. It was, if you just add a little salt to it, it's going to work. Yeah. The littlest thing. And- well, that's how you figure out how good of a joke it really is. If you're able to know why things don't work... And then change them to work. Right. That's how. I mean, that to me is why the whole that that old quote, like finding your voice, quote unquote, that should be called finding what works for you. Because finding your voice gets into people's head and they misinterpret it as if like you're supposed to physically change the tone or the scale or the 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 the, the, the depth of your voice as if you're supposed to like find your, your voice means a character of you. Mm. But that's not true. I think it's finding what works for you. Yeah, what is what the version that actually yeah. goes, oh, when I say this, that's how Andrew says these things. That's why it works. It's not, yeah. I haven't manipulated anything truthfully of my voice. I know it's a metaphor, but I never liked it. Like I was always like, mm. There are jokes when uh, I was on uh, my TV show Undateable, and there's a few comedians on there. Delia, Brent Moore, and Ron Funches. One of those people is a comedian. And they... Ron Funches. There were jokes that uh, were given... That anybody could have, but he needs another joke. He needs just random jokes. And we, the writers and or us as the comedians, would be able to say, like, this is kind of more your Your same joke. This is your voice. This is your style. Right. You know, and because you could see sometimes they write a joke for for Ron, and I didn't have a joke in that scene. So they gave me a joke, and it was clearly written for Ron. And it'd be like, no, 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 this is Ron, do it. Like, that's. I don't yeah. have that voice. Can you uh, give me? Can you give me one? Um, yeah, there was a, a joke where they said uh, uh, the joke was supposed to be like, "Hey man," just the "Hey, hey man," but they wanted it was a "Hey man" joke. Oh, a "Hey man" joke. Yeah. Oh, where everyone's everyone walking in the room and somebody says "Hey man." Yeah. yeah oh, and yeah. when I would do it, yeah, I do it like this. Yeah. Hey guys. No. You're right. That's a wrong. So joke. I don't want it to 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 bomb. Mm-hmm. Um, but more seriously, uh, there would be jokes that like they would give to Brent that were very crystally a physical, and, right? And it was like we don't need to see Brent either. Make we don't need to see we Brent. don't need to see Brent at all. We don't need to see Brent. Right. So Brent was off the show. Get him off the show. And then Chris played both parts. Thank God. But then he got a lot of shit from the Eddie Murphy fan club. Why? Because everyone thinks that only Eddie Murphy's allowed to play multiple characters. Yes, and though, yeah, but he's not. He's the best at it, but it doesn't mean he's the only one who's allowed to do it. I don't it. think he's the best at it. Are you saying Tyler Perry's not as good as Eddie Murphy? I'm saying that as a performer, yes. Really? You're going to sit there right now and tell me Tyler, Tyler Perry is not as good as... And Eddie Murphy is better than Tyler Perry? Yeah. Have you seen Boom A Day of Halloween? Yeah. One I, and two? I watched two the other day. I know you're joking. Let me tell you not something. Not joking. I legitimately... Think Tyler Perry, because people give shit. For, I don't know why people give shit, but you do recognize what happens. Here's why they give shit. Yes, I am joking. Clearly, Eddie Murphy's a better performer than Tyler Perry. But the, I Side like note, the Tyler Perry movies. I love them. Uh, we're being serious. I am. I've watched but them, the reason, and like these are funny. Yeah, the reason people give them shit is because the production value is so tremendously poor. That's why. Because here's a guy who makes millions and millions and millions and millions and millions of dollars and notoriously does not pay people well at all. I didn't know any of that. And is very cheap. His production, you can tell, is quite cheap. Yeah. Directionally, it's very poorly shot. It's extremely poorly lit. Yeah. Audio is sometimes bad. These are movies that are in theaters. I thought that's why he was able to be so successful because he started off making stuff with not having a lot of money. I know, but at this point now he has lots of money. He still has low production quality. But he quality. found his voice and it's low production quality movie. That's maybe. right. He found it. But, since, but I'm not even joking. I know he found it. He found it. But unfortunately... But he gets so much shit. He does get shit. It's because it's not done... W- I think when you don't pay people appropriately, you're always going to get shit. You I, have to compensate people for their talent. I'll ask him about it. I'll have, I'll have him on the podcast in April. So it's going to go Will Smith, Banksy, Tyler Perry? Uh, we already did Will Smith. Oh, but, oh uh, really? Banksy is coming soon. I don't know which one I'm going to put out first. I might put Banksy out first, but I already recorded Will. Can I, can I give you a preview of some of the guys that are going to be on my show? Yeah. Tom Gugliotta. Do you know who that is? That's the dude that has the eyes that go around? Basketball player. Tom Gugliotta. Uh-uh. You don't know him? No. Phenomenal. Um, he's going to be on the show. Um, 
So is uh, uh, Cooking Extraordinaire uh, Chef Emeril Lagasse. Lagasse. You have it, Lemeril? Lemeril Lagasse. Emeril. I think it's Lemeril Lagasse. Lemeril Lagasse is a different chef that was not as successful. He has a, he has a, a web, chef web show. That's is him. It, That's what I'm having on. So you're having Lemeril. You're having his brother. Well, yeah, I'm not. Emerald's brother. Yeah, but well, that's cool. I that's. It's, you, I feel like you're making you're belittling it because I couldn't. No, get Emerald. I'm talking to you. I'm I'm loving Stevie Weeby's show and his podcast isn't as successful as Bobby Lee's. I know, but that's I was a Lemerald little more is. excited about Lemerel and you made it feel like it's. I just you just said you he's had a web series cooking show. It's still an important cooking show. People like it. It's called Here We're Cooking. Yeah, it's a good show. I've seen it. I don't watch it. Okay. I do like Lem- Emerald better. That's fine. I grew up with Emerald. You did. He was in. Cle- he's a Cleveland guy. Mm. He was a. Uh, he was the uh, the Bam guy. No, no, he wasn't. I didn't grow up with him like in my school. I mean, I grew up watching in him. in their neighborhood. Oh, no, no, watching him. Bam, you just check him out. You'd go fi- find him and check him out. I'm saying I used to watch his show. In fact, the first set I ever did at the Hollywood Improv. Yeah, uh, I had an Emerald Lagasse joke, and I remember the guy who ran the club gave me a note. Uh, and I think about this all the time. Wait, I'm not, I'm not, is, is this, this is a real. Story? This is real. Yeah. And you're talking about Eric Abrams? No, I'm talking about uh, Lee. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know Lee? Yeah. Really? Yeah. So, Wait, so, gave you a note? Yeah, so my first time doing stand-up was right when I graduated from college. I was going through my, because I was a real estate agent for a little bit, so mm-hmm. I was taking real estate agent classes, and I took a stand-up <laughs> class that was four <laughs> weeks at the improv, because it, it it was, you go for four weekends, and then- Who was in the class with you? I don't know any of them. Nobody? I don't remember. Damn, I wanted to I'm sorry if you're watching, though. I don't know. Yeah. And uh, someone's a, so, someone is a, Sebastian Maniscalco is like, what is he talking about? <laughs> I, forgot he was, I yeah. was in this class. <laughs> Rick, how could you forget? Yeah. I mean, that was like an Italian Trump. That's exactly what he does. <laughs> <laughs> so I did four that weeks. That was like an Italian Trump. <laughs> so it's four weeks of like two hours or four hours, whatever it is, on the yeah. weekends. And then on the fourth week, you do a show at the improv. Yeah. And... The in the main room, and this is called for people that don't know this, what's called a bringer show. Yes. Where there is no real the audience. audience. The audience is packed, and everybody is there to support a friend of theirs. family so, and friends. So it's a great it's phenomenal. first show. You crush. I, re- I realize this is ZZ. <laughs> you crush. Yeah. <laughs> and, uh, so the, and I wanted to do it because, oh, it's, I'm going to take a class. I'm with people in the same thing. It's, it was easier to, to, to jump in the pool than to kind of slowly go in. You know what I'm saying? Like, this mm-hmm. forced me to do it. Yeah. And one of my first jokes was a joke about how I would do, uh, I don't remember exactly what it was, but it was something about how, you know, Emerald, he comes in and he goes, bam, and everyone goes nuts. I, I would like to be able to come up here and tell a joke and then go, bam, and, you know, whatever the joke was. Yeah, I think that was it. And then Lee told me, uh, you know, before you do that joke, you should tell everybody who Emerald is, just in case they don't know. And I've remembered this since. Whether or not I, I agree that at the time people didn't know who Emerald is, I think that's a really good note, which is don't forget that not everybody is in your head. Yeah. Well. So just just a sentence saying, hey, uh, you guys watch a cooking show? Emerald Lagasse the cooking chef? Just throwing that thing out there. And I just, I just remember that note. Even if they don't know who he is, even if they still don't know who he is, when you say that, the reference now gives them solidarity. There's some context. Like, yes. oh, he's doing a cooking show. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then they all get it, no matter what. Chris That's- Chris Rock talks about, uh, or I don't know if he talks about, but I've heard people talk about how he, yeah, he did talk about how he establishes, he repeats his setup. Yes. Not just the punchline. He yes. re- and after he does it, he repeats the setup multiple times. Hammers it in their head. It's almost like what we were talking about. People are idiots. Yeah, most. And just in case you don't know what I'm talking about. Yeah. How important it is to not, to not, to feel like. Listen, I could get one sentence of expert. All you have to say is, "Hey, so Emerald, the cooking chef." I never thought about that, and he told me then the first set. And it's very smart because then I'm in. I'm all the way. I understand it right away. I don't even know who Emerald. Like you would go, I don't know who that is. That's like saying, uh, uh, Margello Fasciani, most famous cellist. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. He's he's pretty good. He's the most famous. Un- unequivocally one of the most famous regardless if you know his some of his work or not bleed on a rose is one of the best songs i've ever heard in my entire life can i hear a little piece you could you do could you do a cello also yeah With, let me hear it yeah <clears throat> it's it, it's just it's it's a flawless it's a flawless beautiful composed mm-hmm. piece of music and uh, and anyway, now even if you don't really know who he is, now you know who he is once I've referenced that to the crowd. Right. So then I can almost say anything. Like I can make a, a very specific joke reference. Could I hear a joke about him? One hundred percent. I mean, you got you guys know you guys know who Marcello Lagasse is. You know who that is. Yeah, obviously, right. And uh, this here's the a guy. Exactly. 
Here's a guy. Uh, here, here's a guy who. Here's a guy who. T- let me tell you something. When you're in the airport, get to it. We are. And here's a guy. When you're in the airport and you and you get behind a guy like this at TSA, what's your first thought? Uh, I'm gonna chill out for a while. I don't want. I don't want to be behind him. <laughs> it was Marcello Lagasse. Yeah. <laughs> you know, doing this podcast with you right now, there's there's so many bits, but there's also like. I feel like sometimes committing to a joke, yeah. especially in a long form conversation like this, cannibalizes the behind the scene real bullshit that we're doing. Like, <laughs> obviously, we're not going to see it, but we cut to him standing up. But just seeing like us talking behind it and like pitching jokes and yeah. coming up with stuff, that, st- that style of play is what I'm talking about with you, where if it works or it doesn't work, it's going to have its best chance of survival. Yeah. Because I know that you're going to. Give you it. Yeah. I'm going to give it to you. Yeah. I also, also, it's it's fun, so I don't care if it doesn't work. Well, that's... I that, guess I mean it like that more than That anything. attitude is 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 how... That's what I was saying. I, I made a joke earlier talking about, are you ready? I was being silly, but it wasn't a joke, I guess I should say. Yeah. And like, no, I'm not ready, but that doesn't mean I'm not ready. Yeah. You just don't feel like I'm ready. So yeah. there's something about like accepting this is what it is mm-hmm. that really gives you the best chance of survival. Of course. And that's a tone for life. And it's a and it's 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 yeah, it's beautiful. Yeah, that's that's what really more people should hum to. Uh, everything in your life should be one of those. And not like I'm trying to give life lessons. Uh, everything in your life should be a thing where you're like, well, what are you going to do? You're going to try your best and hopefully you're ready and you're ready even if you're not ready. And I find I find, you know, one thing about you saying everyone's stupid. I think I don't know. I it's don't know hyperbole. If, I don't obviously mean everybody's no, stupid. No, 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 no. But, but there but, is but, always going to but be there's stupid. Something, there's something more important that I think that everyone carries more than anything, more than stupidity. It's um, uh, nobody really knows mm-hmm. is like my favorite thing on earth to feel now. I go, oh, they don't know either. Yeah. I don't have to feel scared anymore. Scared? You, you would have been scared for not knowing something because you thought somebody else knew it? Yes. Could you give an example? Uh, sure. Um, I don't know... Uh, I have never, or I am very unaware or not good at knowing um, about who would I call in an instance of fixing an air conditioning unit. I felt stupid. Because you don't know how to get that fixed? Right. I'm dumb. I'm stupid when it comes to that technology. So I, th- I feel inept. So I go, so you- I don't know what guy to call for this specific problem. Do you understand what I'm saying? I know what it's like to not know who to call. That's my point. So I don't know. I don't, I didn't But you know felt a, sh- a shame in that? embarrassed like i was like i should know doesn't doesn't a doesn't an adult know how to fix that thing huh. yeah i can't I, I i understand i just don't connect to this right now well yeah you don't have to deal with your own air conditioner you would call your landlord i was just dealing big time so that's my point is I, it's my house i have to fix it uh, yeah so i either have to hire a man specifically to find out exactly what it is my landlord is, didn't fix my heater and i didn't know what to do when i google it and i find you just look it's called hvac you look for hvac i know people. well no, no no i use an hvac guy but my point is something was wrong with Something that was happening in one of the vents through the filter. Mm-hmm. So, uh, I, I ended up calling an HVAC guy who had initially fixed our real unit, but this is something internal that had to do with um, the vents themselves. So you don't know how to fix it, and then and you I feel felt, stupid. So why do you not know? I do know. N- I do know now. I called my father. No, no, no. What I'm saying is, you said because it seems like you're saying you found this new tool of realizing that nobody knows what they're doing most people don't so know. now you're okay with it yes so but didn't this hvac thing just happen recently yeah so is this a new realization that you've had no 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 no. i just have learned to be more it's okay nobody knows about everything now when i get anxiety about why i don't know how to work something how to uh. fix the i don't know why how do i fix the sprinklers sprinklers are a lot i call a sprinkler guy or a lawn care person correct but also i'm a home homeowner so i want to be more responsible with something because what happens is this is something that everyone knows who fucking deals with owning a home. You will inevitably get ripped off, violently so. Mm-hmm. That's another thing that you learn is there is no price. Prices don't exist. Right. It's completely made up. It's innocuous. Yeah, the Seinfeld did an episode on that on the uh, on the mechanic. Yes, on the mechanic. Yeah. But it was like the Johnson rod. That's right. When it becomes your home, you take it personally because it's like it's a sense of pride. It's a weird, egotistical. Maybe it's perhaps it's a. Uh, a, a man ego thing, this male ego bullshit. Like you're supposed to fix stuff. You're supposed to be the responsible hand for those things. But like I used to get anxiety when we first got the house because a lot of things were going wrong and I got nervous that I felt stupid. But now I'm like, oh, fucking no one knows. Because I would ask my neighbors and they would go, yeah, I don't, I have no, I have no idea. You know? I don't know if everybody 
that, people, I don't know if point, everybody feels that way. I'm interested we, why you feel that way. My point is we all don't know until we figure it out. I agree with That's that. That's what I'm saying. But what I'm interested now in you saying that is yeah. in you being this man who likes to take charge of a room and be the guy yeah. that in a way knows everything or could at least handle himself. I think it's interesting to hear that that's maybe this characteristic of yours of taking charge as a defense because there might be like I don't connect with me not knowing I ask questions constantly I, yeah I'm not a, I, that's I don't a part know of some, your personality well, sure yeah so what I'm saying is it, it's it's interesting to see that for you part of what makes you find this way that now is a is a um is a skill set of yours yeah. this way of commanding so either people can't find out that you don't know or you have to find out how to do everything so you yeah. do know. And it comes from something, and I, I'm interested to know it, if you it, could it connect comes, that back to something to childhood. Yeah, it, beca- it probably comes from a it's it's a uh, it's um it's ego or shame that you don't I don't want to look stupid or du- or bad. Could you remember a time where you looked stupid or bad as a kid? Oh my god, all, effect- the, all the time. I mean, as a kid, it would, ha- it would think moments would happen, and I would feel embarrassed about not knowing. You know, uh, one of the most probably the most prolific moment in my life was uh, changed everything was um, a profound, not prolific, pro- profound moment in my life was uh, we moved to, a, we had moved to the, the suburbs, and my mom was with this How old are you? A new guy. Oh, I was probably like, I don't know, anywhere from, we had moved when I was 10 or 11, something like that, and my mom had had got gotten with this, this guy, this new guy, and because uh, my dad was gone, and it was just a little uncomfortable to be out there, and I loved baseball. I wanted to play baseball really bad. And then I, I just, I had found this kid on my block who, who was into, like, was super into baseball too. And he took me to meet all these other kids to play baseball. And I was so embarrassed. I just didn't know much about position playing and all that stuff. I didn't learn yet. And so. <laughs> <laughs> and I just, uh, I was embarrassed because. One day, we were playing, and somebody hit a home run <laughs> over the fence. Uh-huh. And I said, I have an extra ball at my house. <laughs> like the I'm, Sandlot. I'm embarrassed because I'm laughing because it's like embarrassing. But I went to my house, and I grabbed my stepdad, soon-to-be stepdad's baseball, and we used it. We played with it. Okay, I'm sorry. And... <laughs> I'm sorry. I stepped on your shit. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I thought you were telling me a real story. I really did. I know. Oh. I, I laughed halfway into it. I just couldn't do it anymore. <laughs> That's why you were laughing. I just couldn't fucking do yeah, it oh, anymore. I'm sorry. I stepped on it. It hurt me so much to not be able to finish that. But when I see you, the smirk in your fucking face, <laughs> because it's so beautiful, I lost I, it. I, really, I knew I was going to lose it when I looked at your face. I, didn't, I, 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 I was not believing. I, I really believed you. I know I was in depth in it for a moment, but then I really... Oh. But tr- truth be told, there were moments... Which were, for, for whatever reason that people yeah. don't know what we're talking about that's the movie the sandlot yeah it's you were gonna pitch story. and then you found out that you actually took your sign babe ruth it was a babe ruth baseball and so i had no idea who that how is how far would you have gone <laughs> to building the, the kit and then I, I was gonna do the whole film and then darth vader was your neighbor 100 percent. yeah and my buddy and my buddy uh my buddy fell in love with a beautiful lifeguard made out with her they ended up getting married i think and the guy that i met on the block actually played Play pro ball for the dodgers even though i grew up in chicago sure <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I, I, fuck! We both did it. You know what? If 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 I if you kept go if you kept going, mm-hmm. I would have felt like oh I should no I would I should have you would have I, yeah. I just had I, had I known you doing a bit I wouldn't have stepped it's on so it like that. It's so funny because I almost never break, but that just tickled me so much to look at your face because the way you smiled was so wonderful that I I knew I was gonna. But no, truthfully, when I was a kid, yeah, I would have moments of feeling embarrassed. <laughs> Like one time I moved when we moved to the summer. Yeah. And I was in, you know, I was in leg braces. We moved to Alabama. <laughs> and, really? Yeah, and Elvis stayed with us. He taught us how to dance. Wait, and... seriously? Elvis stayed with you and your yeah. mother? <laughs> no, no, I was just gonna be doing uh yeah. Forrest Gump. Yeah, we got that. We got it. Uh, uh no. But I, all, all I joke... would have moments when I was a kid that were <laughs> I mean, embar- I, here's what it is. I'll give you one. Sure. I um I didn't have a lot of friends in my freshman year because the separation of junior high to um, high school. I went. Is to this ba- real? Tell me if this real, is real. Real, real. I went to basketball camp, as I'm sure you did. But the problem was, my neighborhood was divided. Half of my half of my friends went to one of the high schools, and and we went to the other one. So I came into high school with not a lot of friends. Mm-hmm. I, I lost a lot of my friends. They went to our sister high school, which sucked. And this is a true story. And the first friend I made was a, a like a semi redheaded kid named James Tickle. James Tickle was you the shit. You can't say it's. We're still doing gray. Huh? Uh, redheaded. You can't. No, I can because I am. Yes. Only allowed because I am. Yes. 
So he he had a by the way he had a half pipe a quarter pipe ramp in his basement. It was so cool. It was like it was such a cool kid. But he skateboarded. It's a big basement. Big well deep more than anything else. It was yeah. A deep basement. Deep basement. Yeah, not large, not not scale, but uh, height. And he um he kind of really taught me a lot about skateboarding. I, I love skateboarding. I didn't know much about it. And he taught me a lot about skateboarding. You're telling me a real story, a real right story. Now? Okay. And 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 he made me feel okay that I didn't know what a lot of terms were. Maybe like I was a little embarrassed internally but when i would hear him say to me that's what that is it wasn't like how kids go like that's how do you not know that it was more like oh yeah that's a so-and-so i used to get a lot of how do you not know that from my brother well how do you not you it's so mean it's so condescending yeah so that is what instilled some of that fear as i got older of a guy who i thought should know stuff you should just know stuff you got that from a lot of people how do you not how do you not know that like no 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 no. usually i because i was such a loud mouth sorry I, it's not that I got it a lot when I was a kid. It wasn't. It was just that I, I felt like because I'm a loud, brash, funny guy. It's LBFG. Like, yeah, being an LBFG. If you're if you're also if you're wrong, um, you're stupid. So some people are funny, stupid, and they laugh. They're laughing at you. But I wanted them to laugh with me. So you have to like you have to be commanding and also be correct. That's what's that's that's kind of a very like. It's a very ego thing about being funny. It's like you must be correct if you're going to be funny. I don't agree with you. Yeah, I, I'm saying... And I might be wrong, and I probably am. You are. And that's okay. And because of that, how do you not know that? So Hurts I've, I've thought in about... In a weird way. How the, do you not know that? I've thought about the uh, laugh at versus... Are these real, by the way? Yes. I love real orchids. I got into orchids I adore because when orchids. I go into a nice hotel room, orchids are there, and it makes me feel nice. Yep. So you know what else I do? I have... My Alexa connected to my uh, a, a lamp in my bedroom. Yeah, and, it's, and I have it turn on at sunset. Excuse me. Yes, at sunset. Yeah. So sometimes when I'll come home, all my lights are off. But that walking into my place with orchids greeting me, and then that it feels like turn down service. So just like a nice hotel, you know how the TV says hello, Mr. Glassman, and welcomes you. I do. I have that at my house. <laughs> do you, Mr. Hello, Mr. Santino? How'd you set that up? Uh, the, uh, Phillips Hugh. Do you know Phillips? Hugh or huge? Hugh. 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 H u g e. Hugh. 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 That's cool. That sounds like uh, when it's, people when people are DJs. Hugh, they... Hugh, 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 Hugh. Yeah, Hugh. but go yeah. on. It says hello, Mr. Santino, when I walk in the room. Not I... Mr. and just, just just you. No, you, oh, for my wife. Yeah, she doesn't really get a greeting. Hmm. Does she care? A lot, actually. But it's something I don't care about. You're saying you don't care that she cares. Yep. The amount of times I, I like make fun of her on my either my podcast or live shows and stuff like that, it's amazing. Once which, again, shout out to Whiskey Ginger, which yeah, uh, yeah, new episodes my, yeah, drop that. every uh, every Friday. Um, which is amazing how many people are like, that's not nice to say that about her. And it's like, well, do you think if yeah. she really got her feelings hurt that I would continue to do something like that? Like, it's it's odd. It's just odd to think that people think that that's not the relationship we have, because I think their lines are so blurred in their personal world that they go well if i did that my boyfriend would. yeah it's you know the right and wrong is is more about the boundaries between the two people's relationships yep. and people will put their boundaries onto you and that's part of that thing where it's like hey by the way banksy yes he's going to be on but i don't know if i'm going to be putting the blur on his face well that's up her to him. face that's up to them yes that's up to that person the laughed at versus laughed with i want to tell you a little feeling i have on that yeah the difference to me is yeah. Self-awareness. You cannot laugh at me if I'm aware of it. Because I'm laughing about... If I trip and fall down the stairs and I'm embarrassed, yeah, right? And then people are laughing and I'm uncomfortable about it. This is... Oh, they're laughing at me. But if I fall... If I trip and I fall and I'm okay and I realize how funny this is or I could at least see their point of view and they're laughing, I'm not taking it personally. They're not laughing at me. It's the situation. Right. As an adult, you learn that. But as a kid, that's very hard to consume. Yeah. But what I'm saying is... Those are embarrassing moments. What I'm saying is... I went off a curb on my bike and fell in front of one of my friends from school. Ruined me. Ruined me. Her mother was outside, like gardening. You're you're saying not pain, but shame. Oh, the pain didn't matter at all. I could have fucking knocked out of my teeth. I was so embarrassed. Her mother ran, ran over. Are you okay? Couldn't believe it. Yeah, when someone asks, are you okay and you are okay? You ever you ever fine? And then I remember I got into a fight in high school, and uh, I don't know who won or lost, but we both got punched in the face a couple of you times. You both lose at some point. And I'm fine. 
I'm fine. I mean, obviously, it hurt when I got punched in the face, but like adrenaline's going, it's fine. Yeah. But then when the coach comes over and says, he, he grabs me on the shoulder, he goes, Rick, are you all right? I started crying because somebody was connecting with me. Yeah. And then it was like, and I was, embar- I was embarrassed that I was, cr- the pain of crying in front of him at that moment was like, now I lost the fight because I'm crying and he's not. Yeah. And I wasn't even hurting yet. So yeah. there's something about when people say, are you okay? Where you, I feel like, I'm fine. You know, yeah. you have to yeah. prove to them. <laughs> As opposed to like, you're fine. And I go, yeah, I know, I'm fine. Yeah, I know what I'm fine. I know I'm fine. Mr. Gebby, Mr. Gebby, who I don't think is with us anymore, was the JV coach for basketball, one of the greatest guys on earth, also was a gym teacher. One time in gym class, I was doing jump serves. I had just learned jump serves on volleyball. I played volleyball. Not easy. No, I, I yeah, I know. And I just had learned them from the best volleyball player on our team. That's exactly correct. Yeah, I know, I'm a good volleyball player. And so I played in high school and turned out to be pretty good. Didn't know I was going to be. Sure. But when I learned how to jump surf, changed my life. Your life. It changed my life. Cool. We have cut to a clip of you before you learned how to jump surf and like you got boogers. <laughs> you know, shit. And now you jump surf and you got necklaces. <laughs> Mr. Santino, what you, you know, everyone loves you. I'm coming. Yeah. What you like, pu- sh- the Puff Daddy video. Uh-huh. Yeah. When I, no, when I learned to jump surf, it just, it changed my life because I, I was, it was like another athletic thing I could do that was impressive. Another. What was the first impressive Dunking thing? Dunking was cool. Dunk, being able to dunk was probably You were able to thing. dunk in high school? I was able to dunk my senior year. Swear? Yeah. First time I dunked. Same, but I'm taller than you. Yeah. Do you ever dunk in game? In a high school game? No. No, too risky. You never even tried? <sighs> no. I mean, I had a couple of putbacks, but I don't really count that. Put back where you go up and you go in the rim breaks and everything? Yeah. That's a dunk? Kind of. People go nuts for that in high school for you? Th- that is a big deal. Yes. When people go nuts. But it's way cooler when people dunked in a game. Sure. It was just... It was just. What a feeling, though, to get your 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 peers yeah. to watch you oh, do it's that. Oh, hot. That's... So, so okay, so, so I learned, I learned how to jump surf. And in gym class, Mr. Gebby had left. He was an older guy to go perhaps to the bathroom. That. Do you remember what he was... What he was wearing? No, if tra- it was poop tra- or pee. Huh? See if it was a poop or a pee. This is really funny. He thought it was a pee. Turned out to be a poop. Did he? Do, so was he standing at the urinal peeing yeah. and poop came out? Yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Oh, that's that ruined embarrassing. his reputation for quite a while. So the day that's your life changed, GB, his life changed. That's, yeah, that's because uh, he used to be a varsity coach. That made him a JV Wait guy. A minute, because because poop, <laughs> pooping when you think it's going to pee is fine if you're sitting down. <laughs> yeah. But if, when you go to urinal, and you know what I find? He shit himself right there. When people don't know but, that, but to be fair. He it his pants were off because he Mr. Gebby would pee at the urinal with his pants. Oh, on that's his ankles. worse because now it's on it's it, people see it. <laughs> I find that when people are thinking they're gonna poop, excuse yeah. me, when people think they're, they're gonna, gonna pee, pee, but they actually poop, they're so sure it's not gonna happen that they usually pee while whistling like this. Well, I guess I just have to pee. Oh my God! You know, <laughs> yeah, that's what happened. <laughs> that was worth it. He came back. <laughs> <laughs> the minute and a half story away from how your life changed. Yeah, for a pooper pee. No, but it it, it just the life the, the life change for me was the athletic uh, accomplishment. I was very proud of. Anyway, Mr. Gebby walked back in from the corner of the bathroom, and I'm not kidding. On my life, I am I am in the middle of jump serving, in the dead middle of jump serving. And I feel him coming in the fucking corner, <laughs> uh-huh. and I still hit it as hard as I can. And I mean, something inside of me was like, don't hold back. <laughs> and I went all the way through on the serve, and I hit him so hard in the face, directly in the fucking face. His glasses shattered, and he got glass in his fucking cheek. <laughs> And the the room got so quiet. An entire gym class. His glasses came off and stabbed him blood? His glasses, the ball shattered them, and, and it must have gone mm. broke and gone right down into his cheek. Oh. And the amount... And he just shit his pants, too, right? Like, minutes before. He was wobbling in. He was, wa- he was walking wobbly. Because <laughs> yeah, he had still shit down? in his pa- pants. were still down. <laughs> and there was poop now. Wait, 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 now wait. there's poop in his underwear. Wait a minute. Imagine, though, for real... <laughs> If a guy, if a guy who is so shook up because he just shit his pants with his pants down that he's wobbling and he's already looking for help, somebody help me, somebody help me, he and, then he gets, and then he poops more and there's just poop. <laughs> somebody help. That's what happened. The room, the silence of the room was deafening. So what changed your life about that? 
it, it ruined my relationship with my basketball coach for the rest of my career in high school. He he was so he can't be mad at you. He was livid. He was li- it was like it was it it, uh, it, 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 it huh. was as if he didn't trust me anymore. Right. It was crazy. It was an accident, but oh my god, did it change everything? It was so unfortunate. It was like if I could have gone back and 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 hit it and hit a bad shot on purpose, I would have. But for some reason, I I was like hit it as hard as you fucking. Did. <laughs> And I did. I hit it so hard. I didn't mean to hurt him. That was like, I'll give you one more of a teacher getting hurt. This I'll never forget. We were in junior high, and there was a kid, and I don't remember his last name. His first name was Chris, and he had just moved from um, from French Canada, from East Canada. And he was a really nice kid, but he kind of got picked on because he was tiny, and we played football at recess. And you had to put all the balls in a bin, all right? And people would throw the balls out to the field and make the weakest of the litter go get it. Like they would throw it and kick it as far as you can and be like, you have to go get it because if there are any balls still left out there, we wouldn't be let in from recess. So it was almost like you would be the enemy mm-hmm. number one if you didn't go get it. Sure. So you guys are mean. This guy named, it, this is like what all we, we all did to each other. So everyone had to do it at some point. It was almost like a last one out had to go get it. You know what I mean? You know, like, like uh, losers walk, winners stay. No, you guys are just mean. Go on. You know, losers walk, winners stay. Sure. When you're playing football, it's like, no, you walk, we stay. And so who, someone on the loser team would inevitably get called out for that, for getting the ball thrown at recess whistle. And this teacher, Mr. Scarpino, <laughs> Mr. Scarpino was a hard-ass, like, army guy. I'm just waiting for this to be another movie. It's not. Talk about losing trust. It's not. I know. Someone kicked, They need plutonium, Someone right? kicked the ball or threw the ball way, way, way out in the field. And I mean, like, embarrassingly so. And we probably had, like, five football fields of, of school property in junior high. It was, it was a massive yard. And somebody kicked it or threw it all the way out and was like, Chris, whatever his last one is, Benoit or whatever. He's like, go get it. And we're all laughing. We're running. We're sprinting in. And we're all lined up waiting. And Chris comes running with the ball. And Scarpino is looking at the lines, making sure no one's still got uh, basketballs or football still out. And, and here comes Chris. And he's this is like his fifth day at school. And he goes, fuck you guys. And he throws it as hard as he can. Mm-hmm. And I'm telling you, like it was a Sandlot film. I'm watching it soar over the line's head, and Mr. Scarpino has his head turned, and when he turns back, hits him square, and I mean square in the penis, square in the, put a grown man on the earth. I mean, he he laid on the ground and was writhing in pain, and and Chris immediately, like on the moment it hit him in the penis, Chris started bawling. It was like, oh my God, because he knew it. <laughs> it's he, over. He was fucked. He started crying. So I'm so sorry. We, no one could even laugh. We couldn't even laugh because he got hit in the dick. We, we, had, we were like so sad for what we knew was going to happen to Chris. He was going to get suspended without a doubt. And what happened to Chris? Who did it end up becoming? They shipped him off back to, he, went, he had to go, he had to go back Canada? to French Canada. And the French Canadians were so upset that he did that, put him back to France. The French, also upset, sent him to Iceland. The Icelandic people, the Reykjavikians, they don't mess around, my friend, sent him to Antarctica. This is where it takes a dramatic turn. Some of the penguins up there are really sick of this kind of shit being pushed on them, <laughs> as, you would, as you would, right? What do you think they ship him? Right back to Chicago, Illinois. They say, we don't want you, we don't want you to, we don't want, to, we don't want your garbage getting sent up the coast, because that is just a theme of what happens So where did he, to Chris us. end up? In Chicago? Back to home in Chicago. And how long did this happen, from being shipped first back to French Canada? This is about six and a half years in total. Six and a half years, he goes to French Cana- Canada, to yeah. France, to yeah. Iceland, to Antarctica, to back. Yeah. And, and, what and is that, he doing now? He's just finishing up high school. Holy shit. Yeah. But this was 20 years ago. I know, but he kept getting held back. Because of the trauma. Yep. It really hurt him. Have you ever thought about reaching out and having him on your podcast? No. I don't want to give him that kind of platform. Just because he's, he's just, it's just someone I don't trust. Hmm. Could I you mean, shout out his Instagram? Yeah, of course. What is it? Uh, football 2 da F-O-O-T-B-A-L-L-2-D-A. N-U-T-Z. Football to the nuts. So he's really identified with this. Now this is his well, thing. Well, you got to hold on to something. You got to hold on to something. And that was, his, that, was, that was his namesake. I mean, hell, he got on Oprah for it. He was on Phil Donahue's show. Judge Judy was the one that decided the case. She's the one oh, that shipped him off. Oh, there's a lawsuit? Off. Yes. How do you, that's why he got shipped off back to French Canada. Judge Judy was like, I won't stand for this. Now, when the fr- French Canadian sent him to France, who did that one? What judge show? Which French Canadian judge show did that? It's one? Judge Judois. Judge Judois is, is the judge Judy of French. Interesting. Canada. And when they from France to, uh, to Iceland, who was the judge? 
who sent him from France to Iceland. Actually, as a community, they vote. So the French, it was just, what does that mean? Like there was an actual vote? The yeah. whole country? There was a country vote. There's only about 185 people that live there. And then from Iceland to go to Antarctica, what was the judge? Oh, that was, and, and, and by, they judge, they do it by the air. That's what's nuts. What do you mean? They let the air decide. The air so, shipped him right up to Antarctica, and that's so what, the air, what do you mean? Like who? The air told whom? Who? Who read the air to know? And see, that's the thing. That's why you're an American. I'm. I am too, but I can tell that you don't know. That's fair. I have no more questions. Yeah. And then the penguins. Is there a pe- penguin judge that sent him back to Chicago? Mr. Quacks. Mr. Quacks. Judge Quacks. To you, yeah. Right. I've known him for years. You know Mr. Quacks. Yeah. How did you meet Mr. Quacks? I took a, I, t- I did a little stint up there when I was doing a, a research project on on uh, polar bears polar bear feces oddly enough and I tasted about thirty thousand different kinds tasted. of tasted huh tasted tasted what was your research for I was just I, I well I, to be honest I was trying to get out of this my dissertation paper for to become a marine biologist so you thought you would do a, you would you were just researching uh, penguin shit I said I'll do whatever I want or polar, polar, bear polar bear shit I said I'll do whatever I want this is such an easy degree to get I'll probably go to Antarctica and eat polar bear shit for four and months and you were saying this is a joke yeah and they sent me and I had to what did you find M- that most most polar bear shit honestly tastes pretty good you heard it here first <laughs> most polar bear shit well heck it tastes pretty good. Thank you so much for Andrew Santino. <laughs> Thanks, man. And thank you guys so much for watching this far. I can't believe they did it. They stuck around. Yeah. Well, you know what they say. So I don't so want to bore you with it. it. My, name My name is Rick, Rick Glassman. Glassman. Scoot do. Do you want to do, 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 do that clean? No. <laughs> <laughs> man, that was a good one. Scoot do. Blabbity blue. Scoot do. Let's go get me a tiara. Was I cute? You gotta take out the poop stuff, though. Have you listened to my podcast? Mm-hmm. It should be called Poops, Dicks, and Pussies. <laughs> Ricky, we should have that on the thing. Poops, Dicks, and Pussies. <laughs> and, and gas. <laughs> You're so immature. Oh my God, I'm so immature. We're so immature. I don't... How do we have friends? How do we have people? How does how does anybody like us, Ricky? <laughs> Boops, dicks, and pussies. I'm shat in every toilet in England. I'm so royal. I couldn't wait to come to England to be so sophisticated, and there isn't a toilet that I haven't gone to and desecrated. <laughs> Central London to East London to West London. Oh my God. Oh yeah.